Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser. Today we are continuing Unit 8 in AP Biology by getting into Topic 8.3, which is on population ecology. So this whole unit is on ecology, but ecology has several other branches. There's ecosystem ecology, there's community ecology, which we'll talk about later in this unit. Uh, there's even organismal ecology, but today we're getting into population ecology and talking about what um, can happen to a population's size, its growth, its death, um, under a variety of, well, situations and with a variety of what we call limiting factors. How can a population grow? How can it decline? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Um, so before we get into all of that, we got to figure out what is exactly a population and what are we studying via population ecology. So as I put up here, a population is a group of individuals of the same species living in an area and they interact with each other and the environment. Okay, so we got the same species in our last unit. We discussed what, what makes a species a species under the biological species concept. And if they're all the same species living in the same area, that is a population. So we have a flock of blackbirds. That is a population. We have a school of sardines. Uh, that is also a, well, it's a population, presuming that all of these are the same species. So what we're studying with population ecology, we are analyzing factors that affect population size and why population size changes over time. Um, there will be a little bit of math involved, so be prepared for that, okay? Um, but if we're studying population ecology, we're studying, like I said, um, factors that affect population uh, size and why it changes over time, then we have to take a close look at what causes population to go up and down. And really, we can boil it down to two things, birth rate and death rate, okay? Um, so if more individuals are being born than are dying, then a population is growing. We're replacing more. Are we getting a surplus of individuals in a population that are we're replacing those that are dying plus adding some more? So the population is growing. If the reverse is true, the death rate is greater than the birth rate, then the population declines. And if the death rate is the same as the birth rate, the same amount of individuals are dying that are being born, then the population is steady. Okay, this is a, this is a population chart of the United States in 2018. This is showing different uh, different great age groups across the United States, the population in millions. So we got male and female. Uh, and as you can see, the older we get, typically the fewer people are there. Okay, so if the people joining this age group, zero to four, obviously just being born, um, is the same as the rate of individuals that are dying at the top or towards the top of the pyramid, um, then that means that the population is staying steady. And for in the United States, it mostly is staying steady. And there's lots of reasons for that um, for in terms of people. Okay. Uh, but that's another conversation for another day. Uh, populations can grow or decline in numbers based on lots of different factors. And we can categorize them into two groups. We have density dependent factors and we have density independent factors. Um, and that's something that we're going to take a look at here very shortly. Um, so density dependent factors increase the death rate or they decrease the birth rate, thus limiting the population growth. Um, with higher population density, which is defined as the number of individuals per unit of area. Okay, so these are factors that are going to limit a population's growth based on how many other individuals are in that area. Okay, so some examples of de density dependent factors are competition, predation, waste, disease, and territoriality. Okay, if there's more individuals in a small space, we have a high population density, then there's likely going to be fewer resources and thus competition is going to ensue and competition is going to be pretty much no good for anybody, right? If you have to compete over the same resources. I mean, it's a part of natural selection, but still. More predation is going to occur, okay? If you got a bigger population of fish in a densely, uh, or I should say densely populated uh, fish school, um, there's a higher chance of predation occurring, meaning that they're probably going to be more likely to get eaten by this bird over here. Uh, I think that's a kestrel, maybe? or a, I don't really know. I'm not sure. I wish I knew. Um, there's going to be more waste in the area. More waste can bring disease. Okay, Disease is more likely to occur in a densely populated um, area, okay? whether it's a... Uh, you know, whether it's in the middle of a city or if it's uh, in a forest or something like that. More densely populated uh, populations means that disease is going to be higher as well. And then finally, territoriality, coming back to our, our uh, mountain lion over here. Okay? Less space, more individuals means smaller territories and more conflict. Um, more, what we should say, interspecific uh, 
competition okay, and uh, and conflict. Okay, so that's that's no good for the species either, and that's going to limit the number of um, individuals in a population that can grow. So all of these are limiting how much a population can grow based on its density. Okay, um, so just as a, just as, as an example here. Competition, predation, disease, territorialism is going to be less likely in this habitat with the same number of individuals than it is in this habitat. So this is a high density. Density dependent limiting factors are going to be more of a factor down here than they are in this larger habitat. And that's going to play a role when we talk about human disturbance here um, and our, our impact, and by our I mean human impact on the environment. Um, so the opposite of density dependent factors are density independent factors. Those are going to increase the death rate or decrease birth rate with no change in population density. So they are going to limit population growth regardless of density. They're going to wipe out some populations perhaps or limit growth no matter what, no matter how dense the population is. So for example, a drought or some other type of natural disaster or extreme weather is an example of a density independent factor. Okay? A drought is going to cause limit population growth um, regardless of how many individuals are there. Okay, so what we're studying by discussing uh, population growth and decline and talking about uh, limiting factors, what we are studying is population dynamics, the population's growth and decline over time. It often fluctuates. It goes up and down and up and down and up and down. So it's dynamic. It moves a lot. And that's what we're really studying here is population dynamics um, when it comes to population ecology. Okay. Uh, so we can study population dynamics and population growth. We can represent it with math. Okay. Um, so we have two equations here. One is basically just the growth rate, dn dt, equals birth rate minus death rate. Okay. This is a this is a calculus function over here. We don't really need to know calculus um, for the purposes of the AP Biology exam. But what we do need to know is that this is how birth rate is determined or excuse me, growth rate is determined. It's uh, birth rate minus death rate, just like we were talking about before. Okay, if death rate's bigger, this is going to be a negative number. We have a negative growth rate. If birth rate's bigger, we're going to have a positive number. That means that the population is growing. Okay, simple enough. dn represents change in population size. dt represents the change in time. So we are looking at the rate of growth here. Okay, another representation of this, uh, of this equation up here is dn dt equals R times N. And R, this gets a little complicated here, it's what we call the per capita growth rate or what's called the intrinsic rate of increase. And that's basically how quickly the population grows divided by each individual. Okay? So it's like growth rate divided by the number of individuals in that population. And that's what we call it per capita. Okay? So the growth rate per individual. And then N is represented by the overall population size. Okay, so I'm going to run through an example here of uh, how intrinsic growth rate is calculated. Um, so let's just say we have a population of 500 individuals. Uh, 40 are born on a yearly basis um, and 20 die every year. Okay, so if we put it into our, our equation over here, dn over dt equals b minus d, uh, we would have dn dt equals 40 minus 20, which means the growth rate of this population is 20 individuals every year. Okay, pretty, pretty, pretty standard stuff, right? Um, so... If we were to set this equal, our birth rate to set equal to um, R times N, okay, because that's our other equation, dn dt equals R times N, R, as I said before, is the per capita growth rate or the growth rate divided by population, okay, our population growth is 20 individuals every year divided by the number of individuals, and we get what's called a per capita growth rate or the intrinsic rate of increase of 0.04. Okay, so that's a pretty low number. This population is not growing that much. 20 individuals every year, it's, it's significant, but it's not really rapid growth. All right? um, but when we do get rapid growth, that's called exponential growth. When we go, population re reproduces without limits. Okay? When there's an abundance of resources, there's an abundance of space, there's no density-dependent limiting factors, there's no density-independent limiting factors, what we get is something called exponential growth. And you may have seen something like this before. It grows by a constant proportion in each instant of time. Okay, so it's just, it's just going straight up here. Okay, there are no limiting factors involved. So if we take a look at uh, this graph over here, right, we have several different exponential functions. And this is kind of what it looks like. It's what, it forms what we call a J-shaped curve, and it represents rapid population growth. 
and it grows by a constant proportion every single time. And it can be represented mathematically, just like, uh, just like the other equations, the other population growth equations that we were looking at. Okay, so if a population um, is growing exponentially, what we just looked at, the population growth is R, which is the intrinsic uh, rate of increase or the per capita growth rate, times N. Okay? When a population is experiencing exponential growth, we have R max, which is the maximum per capita rate of increase, times the number of population, the number in the population. This will represent an exponential function, okay? an exponential growth rate. Um, so, which population will grow faster? Okay, um, let's review here. Let's recap here. This is a pretty simple example, but uh, which population is going to be more likely to grow exponentially? Is it this one with a per capita increase of zero point or one point zero, or is it going to be zero point five? Okay. Well, regardless of the size of the population, let's just say each of these populations is five hundred. Okay, if it's the same, if provided that n is the same then this population up here with a higher intrinsic rate of increase or per capita growth is going to more, be more likely to grow exponentially and it's going to grow faster than the one with the lower growth rate um, or intrinsic, uh, excuse me, intrinsic rate of increase. Okay, um, so that is exponential growth and we're going to chat about that a little bit more and um, I don't know if you figured this out but exponential growth is not always a thing um, in real life. Why? Because there's always some kind of limiting factor. No population can keep growing and growing and growing endlessly. Um, so there are limiting factors involved and that can be represented differently uh, with a different equation, a little bit different math. Alright, uh, so we'll get into that in 8.4. Let me know if you have any questions and we will see you next time.